Hi there, welcome back my friends. Tome and Tides of Numenera. We're going to speak with the leader of this strange place. The Chirurgian Slump <clears throat> is its name. Oh no, there's a moor in here. There's also a trader in this strange palace. <clears throat> so let's talk to this guy. Artaglio, the leader, we've heard that he's called like that from his, I don't know, bodyguard, that guy standing here. The features of this once handsome man are sunken and splotchy, the face of anxiety and drink evidenced by the flagon in his hand. He was once a leader of mercenaries, uh, come from the endless battle. The veins of his nose are broken, giving it a rosy appearance, and a cheer that might have lived in his face is destroyed by the frequent nervous glances over his shoulder. Following his gaze, you see him more some distance away. He looks you over, his eyes lingering on your cast of tattoo. He takes a slow, deliberate drink. Come looking for the soldiers, have you? You found us. What a kingdom overthrown, a tomb robbed, a caravan guarded. If you've got the shins, then you've still come to the wrong place. Taglio's irregulars are not ready to serve. Go hang. This kind of thought's a thrice damned cast off. She won't be dragging my men back to that hell. He wants to protect his men. He thinks not about himself, so he seems to be kind of a good man. And he reconsiders. Fine, what do you want? What is this place? Chirurgeon Slump, the homiest place in all the bloom. You've got the good doctors, Demaray and Oberovich here, and if you're sick, they'll see you right, as long as your illness is interesting enough. Need something alchemical? See Sheen. Our job is making sure no one gets too friendly with their shins but us. Anyone who wants to make a home here, he pauses as he looks at your tattoo. Almost anyone who wants to make a home here is welcome if they can pay the price. Some people might call this a protection racket. He takes another swig and glances sidelong again at the mall. Not in my hearing though. Not unless they want to make use of one of the leeches themselves. Why did you stare at my tattoo? He licks his lips. You're a castor. I'm waiting for you to tell me the penalty for desertion. He holds up his hand as if to motion a stop and you see that his troops are all watching you. But unless you come with more strength than this, you'll have a hard time enforcing that penalty. Tybe snaps his fingers. That's why the Chalcodon was so furious. You skipped out on him and the rest of the Changing God's army. I knew I remembered a scandal. Taglio glares. Castoffs can stand up. After they've had their throats slit, the rest of us stay dead. When we took our last objective, we found a nest of juralisks. Not one, mind you, but many. I reported it personally to the Chalcadon, the commander of the Changing God's army, and he told me to wipe them out no matter the cost. Having lost ten of my friends that day, the cost us was already too high. Scanthos, damn cast off, think they're gods, all of them. Couldn't give a damn about us. So I took it on myself to get the pay we were owed, and then we left. We came here to carve out a living, but it looks like we're still not clear of cast -offs. Yes, we deserted our posts. The endless battle is a ruin of lives, and I'm damn proud I didn't waste any more there. You're a soldier? Tell me about that. Oh, didn't I introduce myself? How rude! He swigs again and makes a mock bow. Artaglio, condottier at your service, veteran of countless battles, mercenary not currently for hire. Condottier? A professional warlord, a venture captain, a mercenary leader. These days are uh, a protector for the good leeches of the slump. And why aren't you for hire? He peers into your face. I'd have thought you were here for the bounty. Didn't the Chalcadon send you? He looks back to you. We started from the endless battle. We fought for the first militia on occasion, but for the changing God's army most times, until we were given a near impossible task. To be honest, I don't care about any of that. I just want to ask questions answered. Like what? Like, what's that you're drinking all the time? 
This, this is a Starian rum, one of the finest and deadliest concoctions I've found in my travels across this land. It's like being smothered in a blanket of soft fur and drowned in love. I can strip the gloss off just about any material you care to name too. Most people can't drink one mug, let alone two. Even these brave soldiers find it hard going, but you, I challenge you to match me and I will match you. Put that vaunted cast of constitution to the test. Uh, hmm. You think you can outdrink me? I doubt it. Maybe I will try that. Try it. The maximum we can do. Good luck to us. We'll do it. Yes. It burns on the way down. He wasn't kidding about its harsh qualities, but he failed to mention the acrid string sting it puts in your nose. Tears spring to your eyes, but you manage to swallow it all. Artaglio brims broadly. Have another? And thoughts well now. Maybe castoffs are good for something. Thanks, but I've had enough. Have it your way, Castoff. He turns his back to you and begins to regale his mercenaries with a tail. I tell her that I'm a visitant who knows nothing of human anatomy, and she says she'd be happy to show me. You again, it takes a swallow of his vile smelling drink. Why do you keep looking over at them all? No reason, I just don't like the way the damn thing looks. I don't like the way it sounds. He takes another drink. You don't hear that whispering, chittering noise that sounds like primal hunger? He looks suspiciously at his flag and it wants to eat me. I know it wants to eat me. Worried that it might be sneaking up on me or that I might accidentally be slipping backward toward it. You don't fight in as many battles as I have without recognizing a potential death wish in your own heart. How would you recognize the death wish? It's in the darkness. He appears gloomily around the slump in your marrow. You feel your muscles, your soul rebelling against your own desires. And when you turn around, you find your desires have changed. And he looks at you again and seems to realize who he's talking to. Tabard, take me. Why am I opening my heart to a cast off? Get out of here. He turns his back to you. No, I want to talk about them more. He shivers, I'd rather not. Looks over his shoulder again, as if afraid that it has crept closer. All right, fine. What did you want to talk about? Should we send him into the moor? No. What will happen if it eats you? It will take what it wants of me, then it will open a portal to somewhere, he shrugs. Same thing that always happens when a moor's feeds. Why does it want to eat you? I have no idea. It's hungry for, for bravery, I think. But I tell you frankly, the idea of bravery around this thing unmans me. I haven't got anything for it to eat. I really need to open that more, you know. It's not so pretend you're me and jump into its mouth yourself. Do you expect me to do, cast off, kill myself to solve your problems? Well, not yet. Maybe we'll find something else to do. Let's talk to this creature. You see this tall, nervous man pacing back and forth. His hair is a mess. His clothing stained with food and chemicals. His left eye is an engraved orb of metal, and you can hear it whirring from a distance. He casts fretful glances all around the space, as if waiting for someone or something. Do I know you? He peers at your tattoo, then in your f at your face. You seem vaguely familiar. Perhaps I've seen you somewhere before. My name is Orth Fawn. Can you tell me about yourself? I was a researcher at the Order of Truth, but they objected to the work I was doing for a... a friend. Suffice to say that it's not going well, and I can't talk about it to anyone but... him? What friend? I suppose it doesn't matter. His name is Aligurn. Uh, oh! Aligurn! Perhaps your face betrays a sense of recognition, or the Eon Priest is just unusually perceptive, or he immediately brightens. You know him, don't you? Please, if you can get a message to Eliger and ask him to meet me here, or bring him here yourself, it's extremely important that I speak to him. Okay, but what are you doing here? I seem out of my element, do I? It's the robes. He plucks at the rich fabric, which is far too clean for the bloom. 
I needed a quiet place to continue my research project, somewhere I wouldn't be disturbed. I'm not the first Eon priest to end up in the slump. Though you wouldn't know it to look at these people, at, li at least there's an educated community here, of sorts. And what happened? What happened to your left eye? This so oh, nothing. I was doing some research in the Order of Truth and found this delightful apparatus. I thought that it appeared to be a prosthetic device, and as I was studying it more closely, it leapt onto my face and devoured my eye. And it mated itself with my visual cortex. The pain was tremendous, of course, just blinding. If you pardon the phrasing, but when I woke, I discovered that I could see in multiple spectra, discern remarkably small objects, and occasionally expand my consciousness into other dimensions, or perhaps those are just the headaches paired with euphoria. Whatever the case, it was a worthwhile sacrifice, and I hardly ever notice it's there anymore. Farewell. So we'll have to tell Aligurn about this man. There's something here. The blood covering this gurney does not inspire much confidence in its owner's professionalism. Detailed diagrams of her eyes, body parts, cover a membrane stretched within a metal frame. Maybe we can ask here for someone to operate on that faceless woman. Maybe this chirurgeon can make you pretty, so pretty, just let me cut your face. Yeah, about that face. What's in here? What's about the mold? The cask from which Artaglio fills his flagon is made of from staves of dark wood. Synth steel bands hold the barrel staves right tight. And you can see the dents in the synth steel were where some sort of ornamentation has fallen off inside dark spiced alcohol slushes. Leave it alone. There's the moor. What we need to we need to find something first. And what's that? Metal card is heavily armored. Its surface has been damaged by countless blades and projectiles. What does the apothecary know? This lumpish woman has been ill-used by the years. Her clothes are tattered and grey, as if the life has been drained from them. Her face is scabrous, and when she opens her mouth to speak, her fitted breath is nearly overwhelming. She eyes you skeptically and says, what do you want? Scanthos, so will you look at Mrs. High and Mighty? Once nothing good, I'll wager. It's not for us. Do you have anything that might be helpful for me? A scornful laugh is sharp and abrasive. Ha! Pass on, stranger! My simple cures will do no good for your mighty highness. She turns away from you and begins to hawk her wares again. Ah. A nostrum for bloom rot. Pause on, gaudy shirt. Your shirt shins rot into your purse. There's another man here. Let's talk to this guy too. I'll remember that. This young man's beauty shines even through his grimy face and his tattered clothes. His eyes are white and staring, electric blue, and the movements his fingers trace through the air look like birds in flight. He snaps out of his reverie and grins at you, his teeth even and white against his brown skin. On closer examination you can see that his rags were once fine fabrics, carefully and expertly stitched. Then thoughts, where am I gonna get more money? Hello, she looks quite affluent, so he wants to get our money. He greets you with an easy familiarity, like an old companion. His voice is smooth and educated, mellifluous and soft. Hello, my friend, my name is Boras. Can you spare 200 shins? Why? Why, why, friend, do you remember the first time you fell in love? The sweet laughter of an infant? The taste of a tear when you hear of a friend's death? I do. I remember them, even though they haven't happened to me. He stops puzzlement crossing his face. At least, I don't think they have. But no matter, here inside this shop, Sheen sells the essence of those experiences. If you have the shins, you can live them all yourself. And thoughts my family never understood. They wouldn't even try it. At least you can live them until you run out of money, which I have. Did did I ask for you for shins already? I could swear I did. Only, I only need 200. And thoughts disowned me. At least I think they did. I've had several families thanks to Sheen. Total addict, eh? Hmm. A white automaton is giving out free essence samples. In the Memovira's courtyard, 
Oh. Um. Um. The white automaton that waits for prey. I mean, we could deceive him, but he's a miserable creature. We'll we'll just say farewell. If you happen to come into some money, remember me. Let's talk to Sheen. I heard much about her. When she turns, you realize that the thing you had mistaken for a bundle of sticks and twine is a woman. An impossibly thin woman, her face all angles and lines, her arms summer twigs, her clothes drape across her like sailcloth, and though her face is young, her eyes are old, old, old. Her hands are pitted and scarred from alchemical processes, the apparatus for which stands in dizzying profusion behind her. She does not meet your gaze as she greets you, but her eyes rove across your body, watching and weighing. Traveller. The shop of Sheen lies open before you. Essence is distilled, draughts for quaffing, experience is delivered in a mouthful. At a time, her voice is flat, though an undercurrent in her voice sings at a register you cannot hear. Tell me about yourself. Her expression drains from her face. The clock of Kala hails, superiority made flesh. The city of Sada Emidu, the house above the Indigal, saw my birth, my birthright, to explore, to delve, to understand. Yet the sealitor, in his wisdom, with his implants, told my family that my researches endangered me, reduced me from an augur to a mere human. The voice has risen to a shout, and she collects herself. Can thoughts the Indigal clear and fresh as a morning jewel? continues more calmly. Rather than suffer legal exile to this place I came, the bloom sought a piece of my mind, and so I took a piece of its, and from that connection comes the ability to draw essences. Clients seek me now, seek my knowledge, care not whether my modifications endanger me. Bliss, the angry cast of her eyes, suggests that these memories are anything but he turns and spits into a bottle near her strange apparatus. Scan thoughts, would it trade all for one more glimpse of the river city, the bloom, my suffering? What did you mean when you said essence is distilled and experience is delivered? That which we eat, that which we drink, this is not the only nourishment in our lives without joy, without peace. Without happiness or courage, existence itself becomes empty. Estates are recreated and into dull lives restore ought of glory. It looks proud for a moment. Clients come to me from across the protectorate. They desire to open themselves to a new sensation, though perhaps unpleasant. Why, I ask not. Unpleasant horizons into the depths of human experience. Some seek solace in pain or domination or unusual abilities were the traveller to present a gift of a unique experience, a transfusion of energy to sheen arrangements might be made. And thoughts this traveller, though scarred as she is, may have an interesting perspective. Hmm. I have many unique experiences. I can provide the feeling of overwhelming other, another's mind with a wave of psychic energy. I kind of feel sympathetic to her. As she was also a researcher, her eyes widen in anticipation. Sheen has heard of such as you, dominators and manipulators. Sheen offers essences in trade for these energies. Your offering lowers my prices. Does the traveler accept? It will be interesting. Then step in with me. She reaches out for you. As she activates her apparatus, her hand makes contact with you, a rainbow aura settles across both of you, and you feel a connection to her mind, fleeting images of a grand palace arcing over a river, a mad flight over polluted swamplands and great aerial predators that swoop unto unwary travelers in a grassland that seems to have no end. You feel the familiar twir swirl of tidal energies begin deep within you. As the machine continues to whirl, you feel her insistent thoughts pushing at your mind. The tides curl around her. The shell of her mind compresses. Her body becomes a puppet to your will, dancing to your invisible strings. Her grasp on your arm tightens as she writhes and screams, but she lets it go on and on. Finally, with a shriek, she releases her grip on your arm and fumbles for a beaker. 
semi-solid bloody tears spill from her eyes, great gouts of rich and putrid scabrous tissue. She retrieves them with her bottle, scraping the lip of her bottle up to her cheeks to ensure that she captures the essence completely. The apparatus winds down and the rainbow glow fades. She meets your eyes for a long moment. You bring me a familiarity, kinship in spirit. Inclines her head slightly, my wares. Their cost to you is my cost to buy. Gratitude. Yeah, can you create a mixture that will open them more here in the slump, my friend, now? Know you what it seeks. All creatures live in desire, so too must the more desire something. Yeah, it wants to devour Artaglio, I think. She closes her eyes, as if picturing Artaglio in her mind. The man wears the black mask of fear, but he carries the marks of a hero. He carries a soldier's essence, but he has forgotten its face. He frowns and holds up two bony fingers. Two ways to do such. One, she holds up her first finger. Fetch me his skin, or bring me his hair. I can find the truth of the man a warning. The condottier will see no change if you give him the essence. He must provide another subject. I mean to say that another must ingest his essence. You meet your gaze for a moment. The bloom is not gentle. Few would accept your offer, knowing this. Only the truly desperate plot this cause. Two, she lifts her second finger. I can remind him of his truth. I tell you this. The bloom will likely devour him. Simply look in my wares and you shall find the bravery that he requires. Now I think we'll do it. We'll do it otherwise. We'll find someone who doesn't want to live anymore. And give him his essence, maybe. And we'll try to convince him in the next episode. Thank you for watching and happy gaming to you. See each other in the next episode. And dive back into the bloom together. Happy gaming to you. This is Emmanuel Kahn signing out. See you soon, my friends.